So I am in Vegas. I just arrived here this morning. We're gonna have a good time. I just watched some tennis, it was awesome. I'm here with Josie, Josie, come here. This is my poker coach. Um, she's taught me, she's taught me everything I know. And yeah, so we're gonna hit the gosh darn resorts world tonight. And uh, since I'm only here for a night or two, hopefully it goes well. So that was my poker coach. Thanks for coming in here. But yeah, hopefully it goes well. And um, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. It's Vegas, baby. Let's do it. What's going on, guys? Hell yeah. I'm here in Las Vegas, Nevada at Resorts World playing some 1-3. Happy to be here. It's only my second time ever. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be playing much this weekend, but at least I will get this session in for you guys to see. So very excited. We look down at the first hand. It's kind of gross. It's king eight offsuit in the big blind. Four people limp to me, and I decide to check my option and see a cheap flop. We see a board of 7-10 jack rainbow, and an early position limper makes it $10, and it folds to me. I end up making the call with a gutter and an overcard, so had some equity there. The turn is actually pretty good. It's a queen, so now I'm actually double gutted, picking up even more outs. Early position now leads into me again for $25, and I think about raising here. I think that would be a good play. I think I, got, I have a lot of fold equity here, but I end up on the passive route, and I just call. The river is a nine, so now I have a seven card straight. I don't want to let this check through because this is a very scary card. I bet out 450, and this guy quickly makes the call without thinking, so it makes me feel like I could have bet a lot more here than $50 on the river. But either way, I show my straight, and he ends up mucking. So I'm not sure what he calls here with, maybe some sort of two pair. But either way, feels great to scoop in the first pot here in Las Vegas. Okay, so keeping the ball rolling here, this hand's actually pretty sick. Action starts with two people limping to me, and I decide to raise it up pretty big here with ace eight suited. I make it $18 to go on the button. To my surprise, both the limpers make the call, and so we're going to a pot with $58 in the middle, and the cards come eight of spades, seven of clubs, six of clubs. All things considered, pretty great flop for me. I'm sitting here with top pair, but surprisingly, early position decides to donk into me for $45. Everybody else in the hand folds, and alarm bells are definitely going off, but I can't just fold top pair here to one bet. He could easily have a draw that I'm currently ahead of. The turn is a three of diamonds, and this guy just jams for $128. This is a massive bet compared to the size of the pot. And now I'm really put in the blender. So I'm thinking about previous action. He donked the flop, he jams the turn. He's definitely trying to tell me he has something, but something just felt super weird about this like he was still on a flush draw or a straight draw. He just, it just feels like he wants me to fold so badly. He could easily have bet smaller on the flop in the turn and then had a super easy river jam. His stack was so short. Also, this dude just kept staring at me in the eyes while I was tanking. And apparently trying to show strength means weakness according to all the quote unquote literature. So after a long tank, I just stick the money in because honestly, how epic would it be if I was right? I call and the river is a jack of hearts. The villain ends up showing 10-7 suited for a pair and a flush draw that he ended up missing. And we end up winning this pot somehow. I really got a hand to this guy. Um, he put me to the test. I definitely tanked here for a minute or two, which is way longer than I usually do. So definitely a tough spot and very happy to win this pot. So I didn't have much time to play here in Las Vegas. So I was trying to force some action. And a lot of the time that massively backfires on me. So let's see how much money I can punt off today. Out of boredom, I decide to raise up the beautiful queen four of diamonds from the cutoff, and the button and the big blind make the call. The pot is now $46, and I have no business being in this hand whatsoever. I'm praying for a good flop, and the flop actually comes pretty solid. King of diamonds, 10 of diamonds, eight of spades. So honestly, not too bad. I have a flush draw, so I do have a way to win the hand. I see bet for one third pot, and the button folds. The big blind ends up making the call, so we're going heads up to a turn, which is the seven of spades. And I'm still sitting here with queen high in a dream, so screw it. I'm not going to win this pot by checking, so I bet again for $25 this time, and the big blind snap calls. The snap call was a little scary, and the river is the bink. No, I'm just kidding. I didn't bink any cards. It's the three of clubs, and I still have absolutely nothing here. The big blind checks to me one more time, and I could raise. I could check back and give up. I'm extremely confused. In fact, I'm actually more confused here than I was when I was trying to read my poker coach's text message from about 20 minutes earlier in the session. So I will give you a moment to try and decipher this. Type in the comments what you think she was trying to say, and if you get it right, you are a winner. But similarly to deciphering that text, I end up figuring it out. I slide in 15 red chips, AKA 75 bones with absolutely nothing. And after a few moments, the villain makes the freaking fold. So hell yeah, we scoop another pot that I had no business being in. Okay, so for this next one, I look down at a hand that I think is a little bit better than Queen Force suited, even though it is a pretty highly debated topic. I look down at the pocket aces, the piss missiles. 
I'm in the cutoff and three people limp to me. I have an easy raise here and I make it $15 to go and only the big blind and the low jack make the call. With about $55 in the middle of the flop comes the king of spades, the queen of spades, and the seven of diamonds. Not a terrible flop, though I would be much more comfortable if I had the ace of spades in my hand. I see bet around one third pot, just like I would do with any holding that I had on this flop. Both the villains end up making the call. The turn is a three of clubs, pretty clean card, all things considered, and I will have the best hand I'll hear a lot of the time. But middle position player ends up leading out for $15, and this is really small bet, and it really feels like a blocker bet, meaning he probably just wants to get to showdown cheaply with, uh, with like second or bottom pair. I decide a raise is in order, and I make it $45, which is still pretty small compared to the $115 pot. Only the middle position player makes the call. With about $190 in the pot, the river is the four of spades. Pretty gross card because the flush draw comes in, but when he checks to me, I feel like he would have just ripped his whole stack in there if he had the flush, considering he only had about $50 to $70 behind. So again, I say the magical words, all in, put him in for his remaining $70. And to my surprise, he ends up making the fold. So I have no idea what he could have had there that would call a flop raise and then not call a one-third bet on the river. But either way, feels good to win and not lose with the piss missiles. Okay, so this next one is a pretty epic one. I look down at 9, 10 suited in late position and raise it up to $18 over a few limpers. Surprisingly, I only get one caller this time, and it's the big blind. Going heads up to the flop of King of Spades, Jack of Hearts, Eight of Hearts, an absolutely magical flop for me. I have an open-ended straight flush draw, meaning I have loads of equity against pretty much any hand my opponent could have. And for some reason, in my excitement, I decided to turn my recording off. I'm pretty sure in the moment I thought my camera was turned off, so I tried to turn it back on, but accidentally turned it off again. So oopsie daisy, uh, don't have any film for the rest of this one, but you're just gonna have to trust me. I guess I had one too many Red Bulls here in Vegas. Back to the action, I make a bigger sized bet here on the flop because we're pretty deep and I wanna to try to get all of it in by the river if possible. I bet out for 30, about three fourths pot size bet and I'm showing a lot of strength here and the big blind makes the call. The turn is no help to me, it's the king of diamond. The board of pairing here actually really sucks because I still have a lot of equity against most hands but if my opponent had a set, I might be drawing pretty dead to a straight flush. But again, I'm praying that this isn't the case um, because I'm in pretty good shape against other hands. I bet big again for $70 this time and the big blind makes the call once again. With about $245 in the middle, the river is a two of hearts giving me a flush. So I'm pretty hyped at the moment, think I'm gonna have the best hand most of the time until this dude donk jams for about $250 effective. Pot size donk. This is a pretty gross spot for me. I mean, I hit my flush, but uh, full houses and higher flushes are definitely possible for the villain to have here. So all things considered, the value of my hand isn't super high. I was trying to fold some action and a flush is a great hand. So I think you know where I'm going with this. I just make the call after a few moments of thinking and instantly regret it because he shows me the bad news. Villain had king eight suited. Um, so both of us flopped huge hands, but the turn improved him to a full house and the river fucked me up. So Overall, good hand to this guy, and we lose a 750-ish dollar pot. Okay, so yeah, that last one hurt pretty bad, but we still got some more poker to play, and I can't think of a better way to feel better than having two beautiful ladies console me. I look down at pocket queens, and I'm ready for some revenge, so I raise it up to $15 in the small blind over a limp or two, and the middle position player calls. We see a flop of ace of diamonds, seven of spades, and 10 of spades. Pretty shitty for me, ace high flop with queens hurts, but hey, Maybe the villain missed or I can hit a set. I see bet out for $15 anyway and the middle position player makes the call. Pot is now $66 and let me ask you a question. What's better than two ladies? The answer is three. The turn is a queen of spades so now I definitely have the best hand here with my set and I lead out once again for $25 this time and again the villain makes the call. With about $116 in the pot, the river is a magical ace of spades. This dude probably just improved to trips or even a flush. This is just a great card, all things considered, because now I've improved to probably the best hand, a full house, and my opponent has probably improved to a strong but much worse hand than my full house. So I could probably get some crazy value here. I contemplate going for a check raise, but honestly, if it checked through, I would be so disgusted. So I decide on a huge bet and polarize my range here. I overbet the pot for about $150 into 116. In real time, I was going for 1.5X, but this was a little smaller than that. The villain ends up tanking for a while and I'm praying for a call because there's no way I'm beat when he tanks this long. And eventually the villain puts in the call we show he looks absolutely disgusted, he mucks, and we win this $416 pot, and we're clawing back to profit land after uh, 
losing that big one. Okay, so for the last hand of the night, I apologize for the camera angle. This came very shortly after that pocket queen's hand, so I didn't have much time to set everything up and uh, started filming mid-hand, so sorry about that. I look down at pocket nines. There is a $6 straddle on and everyone calls around to me. So a bunch of lippers in this hand, I'm on the button. Um, and I decide on also making the call. I definitely feel like I could be raising huge here with all the dead money in the pot. I just call. Thankfully, the small blind does it for me and raises it up to $35, folds around to me, and I end up making the call in position. The flop comes beautiful. It is the nine of clubs, the five of spades, and the four of clubs. Poker is actually a pretty easy game when you flop sets and make full houses, so keep that in mind, guys, as you're trying to play. The villain bets $40, and I decide to min-click it up to $80. For one, I wanted to get more money in the pot before any scare card's going to come out, and two, I didn't need to raise too much larger than that because this guy only had about $125 left behind if he were to call this bet. He does end up calling this bet, and so now the pot is $266, and the turn is the jack of clubs. He checks to me. This is a pretty scary card as it does complete the flush, but honestly, I have a great hand and uh, I want to get it all in and for some action. So I just jam for $125 effective. So no snap call, which means I definitely have the best hand. And after a couple of moments, the villain ends up making the call with pocket queens with the queen of clubs. So I definitely have some cards I need to fade here on the river. And the river comes a freaking club. So no, I'm just kidding. It's the five of clubs. So we end up boating up. Um, he hits his flush. I hit my full house and we win a $516 pot to end the night here at Resorts World. Hey guys, um, I hope you enjoyed that video and those hands. I had a great weekend in Vegas. Um, I didn't play too much poker. I went to a lot of shows and had some nice dinners. Um, so that was a lot of fun. I played for about three hours at Resorts World, which you saw, and then the next morning I played about three hours at Aria playing some PLO and some 1-3, uh, which was a ton of fun. Overall, that session at Resorts World went pretty well. In for 400, out for 810. Um, so. Good result there, good uh, profit um, on the weekend. Yeah, and as always, um, leave a comment, like, subscribe, do the whole thing. Um, I appreciate that a lot. And let me know what you think about the hands and um, if you liked seeing the whole Vegas scene. I'm back in Colorado, so um, going back to Bally's tonight and hopefully run up a stack. So look out for that video, hopefully coming soon. So thanks, guys.